Okay, I'm going to start out a little bit with some uh, grounding. Uh, just like at uh, Bill Day, we sat around and was talking about some grounding issues. So I found a, a little, little piece here on uh, grounding. I thought I would read it. For a long time, metal underground water pipes was considered the best grounding electrode available. But virtually all underground water piping today is plastic, and it turns out that rebar and concrete footings or foundation for houses is actually more effective grounding system than ground rods we've been using for decades. So if there's rebar and new footings, the rebar needs to be used as primary grounding electrodes. In a nutshell, if a new home has footings, like this is here, this is my building here, the footings, and they've actually went across all that, and there's uh, rebar all through that whole concrete system in my metal building. And then the metal building is sitting across that, and my antenna tower is laid up next to that metal building, so it's all grounded with all that 40 by 60 area with all that grounding in it. So it acts as a ground plane, so that's probably one reason that I can hear so well is just one big ground plane, that whole area is. So in a nutshell, a new home has footings with at least 20 foot of half inch rebar. The rebar embedded in those footings need to be used as primary grounding electrode. This new provision in the National Electric Code requires a lot of coordination between trade projects and managers. And that just kind of gives an idea of what I that was explaining, you know, there at Field Day about grounding and uh, using the ground as a ground plane to reflect the, your antenna signal. Uh, just thought I'd touch on that a little bit. Might ex help explain a little bit better what I was trying to say at Field Day. Any questions? Well, from back in the uh, 60s and 70s, you remember the old magazines like S9? There was one that was called uh, Coax that a lot of the old hounds wrote, and they drew schematics by hand, and they would actually run wires underground, and that actually acts as the same thing as running the old ground wires. And there was even one article wrote that was uh, where the guys would take old copper radiators out of cars, put them in ground, and put water in them because the water is a good ground. And there was even articles where the guys would take ground water, run off their antenna pole, and run it down to like a lake if they had a lake, because water is, is one of the best grounds you can have. Uh, so there are many different ways of grounding, you know, that was, that, that is just one example. Uh, there was a guy that I used to talk to up in Tennessee, he had his tower out in the middle of a creek because the water was a good ground. So, you know, just sit around and think of just the idea of how can I ground it, you know, there are many different ways. Okay, we'll move on to some simplex stuff. What is simplex? In radio amateur use, the term simplex is used to refer to bidirectional communication on a single frequency, distinguishing this mode of operation from the use of repeater stations, which receive on one frequency while simultaneously retransmitting messages on another. <clears throat> you know, and doing a simplex net, you know, that's what simplex is. Just what, like what we use, the uh, 565, just simplex. That's what I'm going to concentrate mainly on, not on the HF or anything, just the FM simplex that we normally use. <clears throat> a mode of communication in which users, users transmit and receive directly on the same frequency. Remember that any time you use the radio and you're making contact radio to radio, this is with no assistance like a repeater, it's considered to be simplex. The International Telecommunications 
Union define it as communication channels that operates in one direction at a time, but may be reversible. This is termed half duplex in other contexts. A duplex communication channel requires two simplex channels, channels operating in opposite directions. For example, in TV and radio broadcasting, informa information flows only from the transmitter site to multiple receivers. A pair of walkie-talkies, two-way radios, provide simplex circuit in the ITU sense. <clears throat> only one party at a time can talk, while others listen until it can until they have an opportunity to transmit. The transmission medium, the radio signal over the air, can carry information only in one direction. The Old Western Union Company used this term simplex when driving, describing the half duplex and simplex capacity of the new transatlantic telegraph cable completed between Newfoundland and the Astores in 1928. The same definition of simplex radio channel was used by the National Fire Protection Association in 2002. If you're new to ham band, especially VHF and higher frequencies, you no doubt love to try your luck with simplex operating. Using simplex is a really simple and there's nothing more than two stations using mobile or handheld radios, transceivers to communicate on the same frequency without repeaters retransmitting your signals. If you understand the operation of repeaters, then you will understand using repeaters when you're close enough for simplex operations with good signals, but only tie up repeaters for others that may not be able to use simplex. So how do you know when to use simplex if you're using repeater? Well, go to the uh, the output, the simplex part of it, and use it. See if you can hit it, and then, then you'll know that. Well, you know, rather than using repeater, we can just talk simplex. Okay, let's see. Under no circumstances should anyone regard simplex frequency as their own frequency. Conversely, all amateurs should respect the fact that many of these groups hold scheduled nets and should consider this using coverage when operating. Monitor the national simplex often then make your calls there, but move to another simplex frequency if possible, and keep it open to use for others wishing to make simplex contacts. This frequency is often used when mobile on long trips and unknown repeater coverage areas. And that's something that Felton made a comment on back when he was going on vacation that he was monitoring the 520 and the very few people was on it. I think that's what you're saying is that's something we ought to make a habit of doing, monitoring 520 and... Uh, 58 type coax on 10 megahertz versus 400 megahertz increases loss by 10 dB per 100 foot. Use a high gain outside antenna if all possible. The rubber duck antenna on your HT as it comes from the factory 
actually is poor excuse to the attack of the world antenna on. Use the minimum of a three element Yagi or try a Slim Jim style antenna. Most Yagis and burkles may be home brewed with lots of savings of money. Using a burkle or Yagi style antenna with a six dB gain or more will <clears throat> half dial diplex and simplex capable. Well, got lost there. Okay. Certainly improved the results. If you use a Yagi type antenna, you will uh, want to use a rotor with it to try to, uh, different directions. Get those antennas high. Uh, you know, that's just like our repeater antenna, our new one. It's still at a low position, so we have a hard time heating it. Once Felton gets somebody to work on it and get it higher, we'll be able to hit that repeater a lot easier and a lot further distance. So. Same thing applies to simplex. You get that antenna up higher and uh, you're able to talk further. So get those antennas high up in the air. Rooftop or tower installations are best if you can get them there. Even the very tops of trees can be used in a pinch, but be careful in the climb. Don't forget that by adding coax to the total length needed may give you much, if any, advantage. This all depends on the loss of coax per foot versus the old insulation and the overall length of the distance from the transmitter to the antenna. <clears throat> you are looking at for the most ERP effective radiated pair possible at the antenna. Okay, some techniques here. Uh, most microphones used today extremely are sensitive and should be held or placed about a half inch from your mouth. And also as a general rule, speak clearly, distinctly, in a normal tone. Uh, you know, this is uh, something that uh, we were talking about on the net here a while back to talk to the side of the mic rather than directly into it <clears throat> and uh, keep it about a half inch away from you. Generally words spoken at approximately 100 per words per minute. If the message is to be written down, the transmission speed should be slowed accordingly. Speak at a rate which sounds are natural and allows the message to be written down. Words not pronounced distinctly may be misunderstood. You know, this applies to when you're doing the nets. Uh, you don't want to, when you're calling in and uh, passing messages, you don't want to just speak real quick. You want to give the net control time to understand what you're explaining. A net control station coordinates the resources checked into the net as much as possible. He should not handle traffic himself or become the destination for traffic except when traffic directly re relating to the net operations in his area. He may observe something that requires him to generate traffic, such as the weather uh, observations, vehicle traffic conditions, but it is not his primary purpose as net control. Traffic should be coordinated between the originating station requesting a circuit and the most appropriate receiving station known to the net control station on his net or other nets within his range. Yeah. We have the preamble up. Oh. If anyone would like to copy this, we can make, get your copy of it, and so we can get you word to be able to do the simplex net. That way, you would have the script that would you would need to use. So, this is a copy of the script. I think Steve kind of came up with that. Yeah. Somewhat. When I started doing the simplex net, I don't think anybody had a preamble, so this is just something that I basically throw together. Seems to work. Uh, and also, if anybody wants to do a net and you don't feel like your radio will is up to snuff or will do a net, you're more than welcome to come by. We'll put you on the radio, hand you a script, and let you go to town. Anytime, you're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, also something I wanted to bring up right here. That's what I think to touch on next, relaying. Checking into the net for the purpose of uh, originating, relaying, and accepting delivery for the message of traffic. Uh, something we've got out of uh, the habit of doing. When I first started, that's the way the nets was actually run, was one person would uh, get a message or and relay it to the next one, and then relay it to the net control. And that's something we actually need to get back in the habit of doing because, uh, let's just say, to I live in Tornado Century, right, right there. Uh, 1974 tornado coming right through my area. What's to say it won't happen again? And if uh, the club had to have that net control, I wouldn't be there. So you'd have to go back to that original relaying those messages to a net control. So we need to get back in habit of knowing how to relay messages in. So that's something we need to go back to doing. Uh, letting somebody else pick up on that, and even though they can't hear, but letting people relay into him so we can get used to doing it again. Right. But you could just come in there and say relay. Right. And you could relay Michael to me. I got him on the list and move on. Right. Okay. Uh, some of the states that have a big simplex net, one of them is Ohio Aries have a VHF simplex contest. Uh, the purpose of the Ohio Aries VHF simplex contest is to help operators discover issues, improve the station antenna performance, and test simplex coverage. <clears throat> and I've been asked many times, what is the purpose of doing a simplex net? Well, you can take an HT and hit the repeater up here with five watts. It don't take much power. It takes a, a quite a bit for Michael to be able to hit me on simplex. So if Michael knows if he can't get to me, he knows that either he's got a problem with his radio or I've got a problem with mine receiving. So that is one, one good reason. Uh, you know if you've got a receive or transmit problem on one end or the other. So it keeps you up to date on knowing if your radio is right, if you've got a problem, if you're high SWR. Uh, maybe one of your elements got blown off and you didn't know it. Uh, maybe a tree limb fell down on your coax and cut it. Uh, many, many different problems. So it's good to do simplex to keep up with those problems. Uh, Central Alabama Simplex Net held every Sunday evening at 8 o'clock and uh, they take check-ins from all over the area. Uh, so that's, that's a good one to try to hit on um, 146.580. Uh, <clears throat> I hadn't tried it yet, but I want to get on there and see if I can and do it. Okay, uh, BHF and UHF radio propagation is often referred to as line of sight. There are many propagation modes that will vastly increase the range of line of sight distances, such as tro tropio ducting, tropio scatter, and sporadic E. But clear line of sight is well, it's what you can always count on. Uh, if you don't, uh, don't remember what those three are, uh, it's, it's on the test. So if you don't remember it, you can go back and read and ask questions that's on the test. Identify, legally you must identify at the end of the transmission or at series at, at every 10 minutes during the communication. Speak plain English, do not use cue signals. Uh, this has been brought up several times. Uh, you'll hear a lot of the guys on the FM and they'll start saying, cue this, cue that. 
uh, and that's something we try to stay away from using plain English to where everybody understands what you're saying. Uh, don't use 10 codes and don't use CB slang. Uh, I'm bad about using Roger, but I have found out that it's one of the main words that's uh, in the uh, ham community. So it is accepted in the ham community. Uh, it comes from the Air Force. Uh, use phonetics to clarify your call sign and easily misunderstand words. Use the minimum amount of power necessary to maintain communications. However, do not use power so low uh, that you have to keep repeating yourself. So I hope I didn't bore you. And I hope you learned a little bit. Uh, I tried not, uh, tried not to make it so long as you'd fall asleep and listen to me talk. Thank you.